What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man Eric Sheets Aver. We are gonna. We are finally back together. It's been a long time. It's been a little bit of a little bit of crazy, which happens in the summer sometime. But it's nice to be back. And uh, Sheets, how you been doing? And and uh, we'll get into tonight's slate. Been trying to hold down the fort, uh, DFS wise. I hopefully I was able to get you guys as much as you needed. Um, between Bobby being out and Evan was away as well uh so in italy so hopefully no support stuff happened that didn't require any uh issues um we're um we're working on a lot of things behind the scenes uh we have goldie who's working on a projection system that's going to either re not replace mine but probably supplement mine in some way yeah. or at the very least make make it easier for you to access everything so that's that's uh kind of good news behind the scenes we're talking to a couple of people maybe helping in a lot of different ways and uh, look, it's always tough when Bobby's out, but if he's going to pick a week to be out, it's probably the, the All-Star week. All -Star week. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, so, that's, so, so that's that. And I'll notice that he's wearing a hat. He's wearing a Sabersome hat. Yeah. And, 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 and it reminds me, I got the same box here at the office. So I, gotta, I have to have a hat somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I got the, yeah, there it is. So I may as well, right? So I got- There we go. So I got the same one. So we certainly recommend you guys use Sabersim to help- uh, Build your MME lineups and, and don't hold it against Saber Sim how terrible I look in hats. That's not their fault. <laughs> so uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to get after uh, the, the, this. What's this, what's this called? The second half, right? The second half of the MLB season. Yeah, no, it's I, yeah, that's where we're at. And and uh, and I, we will be doing I'll, I'll be doing more stuff targeted uh, with some Saber Sim shows. Uh, talk to some of the guys over there, but also I think we'll try to incorporate them in occasionally in, in these morning shows, too, as well. Just, uh, you know, just because I, I do think that they're. Uh, the, the, it's hard early in the day always with projections and ownership and stuff, yes. but I have found that close up to lock that between Sheets's and Saber Sims, um, it, it's much more accurate than, than the well, industry has. As, I'll, I'll tell you something else. Right. So, so, somebody, and, and, and I guess they hear a little behind the scenes stuff. Somebody came up with an idea. So I, I don't usually put like my quote unquote cores out. Like that's just not kind of not my thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you have a Saber Sim account, it allows me to just kind of put them in there like much mm -hmm. easier. Like Bobby, he puts like his cores in five and five, whatever, in like a separate part of, you know, like the site, like the best bets and whatever it is. I think Rody has a thing where he puts his best thing somewhere else. Like the only place I actually put cores out, so to speak, are on in Saber Sim. And someone said, well, you know, I think it's only right if, if we're subs, we're paying subs, we should probably get access to the cores without having to also have a safe. I'm like, yes, that's not the, the worst. Uh, input so i don't know we're working Absolutely. yeah we're working I, on that. I said anybody individually in the meantime i'm happy to to, to screenshot and send it over or whatever we yeah. we didn't think it necessarily needed to have to be everywhere else on the site because it's the same yeah. thing but so it's redundant information but it, for anybody else who wants that i will I'll be happily show send mine every day to the u and, and the other thing when we talk talking about cores i mean when, when i put my stuff out it's a little different than maybe bobby and Rody or most of the industry when i put my cores out i always put out like my four or five highest leveraged players. In other words, like, like when I put my golf, my golf things, right? Like my four core plays were all guys that were like 4% owned that I was going to have like about 15% of. You know what I mean? Like it was, they weren't even getting my highest owned players. They were just going to be like the highest leveraged play like the, that I want to build my, my MME exposure around. So, and I try to like explain that when I'm, when I'm, when I'm going over. So when people look at my course, like who, what? You don't like this guy, but yeah, I do. But you know, you don't need me to tell you to pick. Uh, I guess you did need me to tell you to pick Tony Fino, but you don't need me to, to tell you to pick Tony Fino. Um, I, you know, so I, my, my view of core is just a little bit different, but mm -hmm. well, uh, again, I, I do appreciate all the feedback and, and, and don't think you're being mean. Don't think you're being a pain in the ass. You guys have any feedback, go into that true DFS support part of the discord and, uh, and, and fire it off there. Um, absolutely. And, uh, that's it. You ready to, uh, to get into this we're hey but you know what we're um we're set up pretty nicely for the for for a bobby eric uh maybe a possible baseball game at some point in the in, in, in october i'm hoping so know. man i'm we'll hoping see. so I, see i got two shots i mean because i promised that if the mets made it i, I would i would do that also yeah um so we'll uh we'll see yeah it, it'll be fun man i'm looking forward to it um Let's uh, let's jump into it. Let's let's get into this. Am first I sharing game. my screen? I think I am. Yeah, yeah. You, you got it up. And uh, Tampa Bay, Baltimore sheets. Why don't you start with your thoughts here? So um, I do have Tampa as as a um, as an OK kind of I don't want to say secondary. Yeah, but I guess an OK stack. They're not my top stack, but they're 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 in the mix, I suppose. 
Um, I'm really not getting too much of Baltimore. And with respect, well, I, I could make a small case for Baltimore, I suppose. Um, they're going to be low owned. And, you know, I have them rated in the top six or seven as far as values go. So I guess that's not the worst idea in the world. I don't think I'm going to get to either of the pitchers, though. Uh, neither Voth nor Kluber is making it to my, uh, my top ten uh, today. Yeah, um, it's I, I'm open to the idea of of Tampa. Um, I, I'm I'm looking at that right now, and that's probably what I like the most in this game. I think I, I like you said. I think that Baltimore certainly makes some sense. I like Rutschman at uh, four point two. I like I mean Mancini's two point six, which is kind of kind of crazy. Uh, what's happening? And you've also got you know uh, two point nine in Mount Castle. So both sides are affordable enough where I could see do, using them. I don't have them either of them as major priorities. But I think that I will take, you know, I'll have Tampa Bay will be just on the outside of my my higher level teams today. But I think they're they're pretty interesting. All right, let's talk about Atlanta and Philadelphia. Sheets, what do you think? It's, it's weird to see the Max Freed at 10.5 and, and going to be chalky. Um, we're not used to seeing that very much. So I I I like Freed. I I feels like he's going to be really popular. And I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. What are you, what are you thinking about this game? First of all, I, I, I'm only because they're not on this slate. Um, am I going to not be able to mention this um, uh, later? But one thing you were out for, I'm sure you saw it. How about Toronto putting 28 runs up on the board? <laughs> 27 of them in the first five innings, six innings. Um, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, that um, was absolutely nuts. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be playing free. I don't know. Um, that's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to, I'm getting to some of the cheaper guys a little bit easier than, mm -hmm. than, than freed. So um, uh, that's, that's, that's where I am. Uh, and as far as Suarez, I just, I don't see him like on my list anywhere that, that that's relevant. So, uh, and I don't, not in the mood to target Atlanta either um, as far as a, a pitcher goes. Mm -hmm. Now, so I'm probably I'm probably not going to get to any of these guys. Now, again, as as I always say about Freed, you know, he's he's a, always a good, really, he's a great pitcher. You know, he's a great enough pitcher that I'm probably not going to play stacks against him. You know, whether or not I'm not, I'm going to, I might be avoiding him in DFS. Um, and oh, you know what else you missed? By the way, you missed Ian Anderson chalk day that failed in the top of the first. That's he how it like goes with Ian Anderson. He was really popular, and he gave up five runs in the top of the first. Oh, jeez. Um, so, so Phillies. Uh, I really don't like Philly. And as far as Atlanta goes, um, I can't see why I wouldn't put him on my list, but I'm just not getting there. Uh, maybe they're either too expensive or whatever it is. I, they don't, I don't really have Atlanta rated high at all. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I mean, they 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 are expensive. That's probably a big part of the reason. I, I actually think there is an argument to be made for Suarez here. Yeah. I, I think he's he's a, one of those guys who gets overlooked but has the strikeout stuff against a team in Atlanta that even with all their power does strike out. And he's pitched really well against Atlanta. Well, he pitched really well against Atlanta last time out. And then, and then he ended up giving up four runs in the, in the seventh. So it doesn't look as good as, as he was as he was going. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm open to the Braves on the, at, at, the same, at the same time. Like I think if Suarez gets a little bit wild at all, this could be a monster spot for the Braves. And because of their prices, I just don't think that many people are going to play the Braves. So I actually think the Braves could be a really good stack at low ownership, as I think Suarez is a really good large field tournament play. It's just a game theory angle. Like these guys, I mean, Suarez is going to be completely unowned and the Braves are going to be unowned on DraftKings. They'll be owned on FanDuel. Um, so I, I am interested just from that standpoint, not to mention it's a good hitter's park. It's 84 degrees. You've got wind blowing out to right center. Um, so I definitely could get behind some Atlanta and I will not take any batters against Freed. I like Freed as a pitcher a ton, as we all know, but 10.5 is a lot. Um, I've got him on my list right now, but I, I actually think I'm, I'm almost as interested in Suarez early on because I'm looking to spend down at pitching as well. And I think there's just better options. I just wanted to mention that, that the Suarez is like one of those guys who, who can get hot for, you know, and, and, and help you win a slate at no ownership. So I wanted, I did want to mention him. All right, Cleveland and Boston. Is that right? Is that what you got next sheets? Let me see. Yes. Sure. Yeah, Cleveland, Boston. What are we doing here? Because uh, I think Boston makes a lot of sense. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I, so I have two, and again, I, I one of these days, I'll, I'll put all this stuff up, but 
I have two stacks that I, I, I like um, the most as a good combination. I mean, there might be three. We'll talk about that in a minute. But two the, that, that, that I really, really like is a combination of maybe low ownership value and, and upside that are not the Dodgers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Cleveland happens to be one of them uh, in this spot. I, I didn't quite get to the Boston side. I, for me, I, I, I actually had Cleveland as the preferred um, mm -hmm. in this game. Um, and I... I'm not looking. I, I'm not seeing either of the pitchers, so I could be. I can be trying to talk into um, Boston, but I'm. I'm not seeing them at least for at first glance. Yeah, I. I just think that you know, Plezak is a adequate near average pitcher and going into Boston. That's usually a recipe for disaster because the team kills the ball when they're at home. Um, it's not the. It's not a great Boston lineup that they're putting out there. I'll tell you that. Um, but it does make them cheap. So. I think that I, maybe, and I, and I agree with you. I think that Cleveland, we should consider a little bit more. Pavetta was really shaky right before the break. Uh, also had to face the Yankees back to back and the Blue Jays in there. And he had some tough matchups. He pitched well against this team last time he faced them, but I, uh, I could certainly get behind some Cleveland here uh, as well. So I think both of these offenses are definitely in play. And I think that I have them, you know, just a little bit ahead of Tampa Bay at the moment. Um, and, and again, there's other teams I like a little bit better. So as we, as we go on. All right, so San Diego and Detroit. Uh, I am probably going to to make my Manaya one of my priorities today. Uh, we know that he's all over the place and he can get wild, but if there's a team that you want to face, it would be Detroit, and I'd rather be doing it with a righty. But I think he's a really strong option, and I think the Padres are a very interesting option. Uh, some of it even price wise, we've got Hosmer and and Nazara super cheap on DK um depends on how the lineup shakes out we see the Padres do a lot of different things but decent I mean not a great hitters park but you know better hitting weather as it will be this time of year so I like I like San Diego and I like Manaya. um yeah um I I I, I would imagine that Manaya would be the one of the most popular if not the most popular pitcher mm -hmm. on the slate um I actually have I have three guys all in the same kind of price range that are getting ownership that I, I kind of like. Um, and this is, this is certainly one of them. And I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Manai, although he could be all over the place, he's still, still versus against Detroit, you know, um, I, I would have to imagine he's the, he's the safest for me. I mean, it's, I guess, I guess given what you just said to ca call him safe is kind of, maybe that's ignorant. I don't know, but to me, that seems, seems pretty logical. So for me, it'd be, it would be Manaya and, um, Probably, I guess my top option, I suppose. And then um, hitting wise, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get to San Diego or Detroit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm definitely, as of right now, San Diego, I think might be my favorite of the early teams that we talked about. Okay. Um, Pittsburgh and Chicago in Chicago, we have a little bit of wind blowing in from right center field. Not enough to really make this game, uh, to, you know, hey, we have to play the pitchers or play the hitters kind of a thing. Um and I'm open uh, as I as I often am to Brubaker against in a, in a good matchup, and he he actually pitched pretty well over the last uh, few weeks and had a really nice outing against the same Cubs team about five six starts back. Uh, Seventy four hundred is reasonable, so Brubaker is interesting to me. I actually think you could make an argument for Samson as well. Um, I know he had some, a couple of rough starts, but I still think he's got enough talent against the Pittsburgh team that you could take some shots. I just don't think I'm going to be playing that many bats here. You, you could have Cal Mitchell at, at 2K, uh, in a, you know, up in the lineup. You could have Josh Van Meter at 2.7. There's Ben Gamble's 3K. There's cheap enough bats to where I think these guys are are certainly worth mentioning. Um, but I, I don't feel especially excited about stacking these either of these teams for some reason. How about you? Yeah, so this is the one I was going to ask about because it's, it's really funny. So, again, one of the just – one of the things that I do is I look at all the projections across the industry and there's one, there's one site that there's basically a glitch in their system mm -hmm. where, which is, which is preventing me from like just putting everything together the way I want right now. So it's not, I'm not putting anything up for a little while. And for whatever reason they have, and it's literally a glitch, but it's funny to watch. They have like Pittsburgh, like they're projecting them to score like 40 runs or something like this in this game. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so I can't, I literally can't do anything. Um, but, uh, so, but, but then it, it's, it got me to look at the game and I was wondering maybe it was like a wind game that they were overestimating and stuff, but so the wind isn't blowing out. It's actually, as you said, might be blowing in. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm probably going to be off of this. Uh, if anything, um, I do have Brubaker is just a, a real, I mean, like third level 
pitcher, I guess, on the slate. But hey, uh, I don't mind it, you know. Uh, but but I, I have I have other guys in this price range better, so um, I'm probably going to be off of this. Yeah, I'm just going to throw out about Brubaker that uh, he's you know he's been pretty solid. He's an above average strikeout guy facing a team with the sixth most strikeouts in baseball against righties. And I think he's just a good enough guy at 74 where I'm probably going to actually prioritize him as one of my main few pitchers today. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. I, I think he's, I think he's more interesting than, than, uh, than I, maybe I first let on, but I, I, I do like him. I, I like attacking the Cubs too. And I also like attacking the pirates, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to quite be able to pull the Samson trigger today. All right. Uh, what do you have next? So I guess I guess I, well, who's got more tricks, Syndergaard or Granky? That's 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 my new question. So that's the, that um, that that is she. This is actually like an interesting spot here because I I think you could maybe if Granky was four nine or something, I could. Is, make is this one of those spots, by the way, where 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 you want to play the guys that are running on Syndergaard? Yeah, absolutely. That that's one huge advantage of not necessarily even having to stack, but you could take you know Wit Benatendi. Those would be uh, both wits. Ben Attendi um, would be the preferred guys for that option. Obviously, if you wanted to make a full stack, it gives you a little extra good feeling to have Michael Taylor in there because if he gets on, he's likely running. You do have pretty strong winds blowing in from center right center field. Um, but I, I, I mean, if, if if there was no wind, I would certainly make an, make a case for some, some of these Royals bats. I still think you could you could play these guys as as a mini stack or as one off just because of the stolen base upside, like you mentioned. Um, but I, I think Syndergaard is actually kind of interesting. I'm just, you know, it's, 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 a, he's, he's had a few actually pretty good starts lately and it's, it's a weak enough offense where if things sort of break his way, I could see him being, you know, a reasonable play at seven K. So I, I have Syndergaard on my list, but I'm, I'm not overwhelmingly excited about the hitting partly because that weather. And then the angels lineup is just not like, I don't get excited to play them, um, but they certainly are in play against Granky, as is everybody. I, I don't feel one way or another, uh, particularly high or low on them personally today. Low run total, considering it's might be one of the lowest run totals Granky's had all year against him, only four runs. Um, yeah, so I'm sort of I'm sort of wishy washy on this one. How about you? Yeah, um, I, I would probably take some shots at some at KC, provided there's no real wind issues. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to play the angels. They, I don't, they just not scoring. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not going to play Syndergaard. I'm not going to play Green. Makes sense to me. Um, all right. Let's talk about the 640 games. Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry. We forgot. I forgot Colorado, Milwaukee. Yep. It's what you want to go out, uh, start on this one. Sorry. I had to. Yeah. So Aaron Ashby is one of the, uh, one of the logical uh, uh, cheapos at 7,700 um, home against Colorado. He's going to project pretty decently. And I'm, you know, I'm seeing him getting, uh, you know, 20, 25% ownership, uh, at least early. Um, and certainly makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're home against Colorado, um, you know, it's usually good news. So, uh, yeah, sounds good to me. Um, uh, and as far as hitting goes, I don't think I want to play either side here. I mean, I think you can so try to make a case for Milwaukee, but, but I, I don't, I don't need to deal with that. I don't need to deal with Again, free with, with with Freeland. I mean, I can't even get to him at, in Colorado. I don't know if I want to get to him in, <laughs> on the road. So uh, uh, I'm probably going to play Ashby and uh, probably stay away from the rest. Yeah, I think the Brewers are going to be. I mean, one of the mistakes that I think everybody does is, is we sort of round all these pitchers' overall numbers. It, we, it's really unfair to to the guys who pitch in Colorado because and 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 it, and it screws up other people's games because everybody wants to pick on them because the numbers, all the advanced numbers, all the numbers look great against them. Oh, look at it! He's getting hit like this. He's getting hit like this. Um, it's it's different when you leave Colorado. So uh, I I do think that you'll have some a little bit of chalk on the uh, the the Brewers side, which is probably enough to keep me off of it. Um, you also got you know some serious pinch hit with, risk with guys like Brousseau who might be in the middle of the lineup today. Um, I could see that with several guys actually happening, but I, I don't mind it. I, I certainly don't mind any of the bats. I'm not going to argue with it. I just don't personally think I'm going to stack them, especially if the ownership continues to look high. I, I will take, I will play some Ashby, but one of my little get weird ideas today might be to play the Rockies at no ownership. Uh, you do have it, you know, with the young pitcher, the Rockies have been actually surprisingly pretty good against left-handed pitching, even on the road overall this season. And they have, they have some power against lefties in general. So I, I, I could see an argument for maybe playing some of these Rockies, uh, especially like the CJ Cron, Chris Bryant, Connor Joe, 
Brendan Rodgers. I mean, they're expensive, so people aren't going to play them. And I think that they have a little bit of a better chance of, of succeeding tonight, maybe than they're getting credit for. So they're, they're one of my get weird stacks today is Colorado. But uh, I, I agree mostly that I'm just probably going to play Ashby more, more than I will Colorado. But I'm going to make sure I get a couple Colorado stacks in there. Makes sense. All right. Let's move on to the 640 game. So San Francisco, Arizona. And I mean, now I don't think we even have to look anymore. We know the roof's always going to be closed because it's like 7,000 degrees in Arizona. Just before I do that, uh, I'm going to double check and I'm going to sure find out that the roof is probably going to be closed because people don't want to overheat and die while they're at the game. <laughs> um, and they have, uh, yeah, it's going to be closed for, I think, the foreseeable future. Uh, if it was open, I might have a little more interest here, but I do think that, you know, the Giants, uh, Certainly makes some sense to me. Flores, Ruff, uh, Mercedes. Now you know the deal with the Giants. You you have to you have the pinch hit risk with a lot of these guys. Uh, they don't they're not quite as healthy as they were early in the season, so maybe not as much pinch hit risk. But there's certainly there's certainly a some risk with them. I, I think they're kind of interesting though, and uh, I, I think I can get get behind a, a Giant stack. I don't think I'm getting to Arizona, and I'm not getting to either pitcher. How about you? Yeah, I like San Francisco a lot. I have them as my uh, as the other one as, alongside of Cleveland as the as the my favorite non Yankee uh, non Yankee uh, non Dodger um, stack. Um, I didn't know about the the roof or anything like that, but uh, just I'm presuming the projections is, are are assuming the roof is going to be yeah. closed. Um, yeah, yeah. And they they look to be just as good as some of these other teams, and they um and their ownership is, seems pretty pretty reasonable. So I. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually like them uh, alongside of Cleveland as my top two uh, non-Dodgers, at least for now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm in there. Makes sense to me. Um, all right. Well, let's get over to uh, to Houston and uh, Oakland. To Houston, then, man. I, Seattle runs comes into Houston with a 100-game winning streak and gets swept like it was nobody's business. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I know. Crazy. <laughs> and, 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 and so now you get Houston – with with uh, going into Oakland and Odorizzi, and he is probably going to be. I think I think him and Manaya are just have to be the chalk pairing. I, I would imagine. I, agree. I mean, or Freed. I mean, like you said, um, if you can get away with it. But but how, how do you how do you not, you know, play Odorizzi and or Manaya? I mean, like Odorizzi right. against against Oakland. Um, you know, listen. Is it is this the return of of uh, this this year? Could be the. Uh, Return of Odor is he, right? I mean, mm -hmm. but every once in a while, he does put in kind of a clunker. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, not like he's a Cy Young Odor is he or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I mean, I'm looking here. He's got three here with like three negatives pretty much in a row. Then he has another negative. Yep. I mean, he's a he's a he's a GPP fade, I think, right? I mean, isn't he the guy that, that you're supposed to fade as chalk? I mean, if he puts up these types of numbers and you're supposed to just say, just give me Oakland and let's go. Hey, I, I don't know. Uh you're not going to have to talk me into playing Oakland. That was one of my hero teams this year. So, yeah. um, hey, tell me who's a good play. I'll say Oda Rizzi is going to rate to be a really, really strong play. And in cash, definitely do it. But I I, I will literally have no problem playing Oklahoma, Oklahoma with uh, Oakland in my in my GPP. Yeah, not to mention, you. I mean, you have Oakland so cheap that even if you're not playing them as a stack, you you, you can play three of them. You can play them as a – And that's, and that's when you play free, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. It's just – it's really – they're just crazy, crazy cheap. Um, I, I, I Of course, I, I do like Houston, and I'm wondering how high-owned they're going to be because of the pricing again on DK. They're expensive to stack unless you go to the bottom of the order, which is fine. You can go down to McCormick or – Dubon or something like that to fill out a stack. Even Guriel's cheap, but everybody else is pretty expensive. So it's kind of a tricky stack to get in there. And it is in Oakland. Yesterday, you know, they're going to, you're going to see this all the time. Oakland in the day games, you're going to see teams score a lot of runs. In the evening, it's always going to be in the 60s and it's harder to get the ball out of the park. But uh, guys like Alvarez have no problem with any of that stuff. Um, and Tucker, it, Tucker is cheap. Well, that's, I mean, it's cheaper, I right, guess. Yeah, he's more affordable. I mean, Alvarez, though, just it doesn't it just feel like I feel like every time I look up, he's hitting a home run. It's nuts. It is. Um, long. So I, 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 I do like the Astros quite a bit. I think they're a good team to sort of focus in on. I don't see how Euler is going to really succeed here. He, he also he just faced this team, uh, did not pitch well in that game against them. And I think that he's going to have a hard time getting through this lineup. So uh, I, I like the Houston side of things a lot, especially if somehow they end up low on because of the pricing on DK. Well, I mean, if you don't play, if you don't play Alvarez, and I just threw some dudes in here that you could play 
Which I'm playing five man Houston with these guys with with literally no issues. Um, you yeah, know, play Tucker, Pena, Bregman, and these are good. These are good hitters. <laughs> yes, and you skip the two best ones. What's that? You just skip the two best hitters in order for. Well, you skip play. Altuve and 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 uh, Alvarez, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you know. Yeah, it's baseball. Hey, anything, <laughs> anything that can happen. Uh, What's Altuve? Is he six thousand? He's uh, he's five. Only he's five. only five. I mean, yeah. Hey, he's pretty reasonable. He, he'll be he'll be popular today. Um, but I, I, I like I do like the Houston stack. Um, I think that is that is a good way to go. And I don't think there's anything profound about that. It's just interesting that uh, the early ownership at least has them a little lower than what, what I would have guessed. I mean, just look what I just did. I mean, you play if you want to play Odorizzi and Mania, five man stack Houston. I'll even give you Altuve. Yeah, you still get to play Alvarez, whatever. And yeah. then this is this 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 plays easy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it makes a lot of sense for sure. Um, especially if you're gonna play Oda Rizzi. I think that if you're if, if I'm gonna have some stacks that are gonna be Houston, I'll probably use Oda Rizzi with those stacks just because yeah. it does correlate to the pitcher having an easier time and being able to really go out there and attack hitters, especially when you're not as terrified of another team now out. Oda Rizzi can always get hit hard, but this is basically the best lineup in baseball that you could face. <laughs> so um yeah, I, I I like the Oda Rizzi with the Houston stack quite a bit. Uh, I think right. Seattle gets back on the winning train today um, after getting swept by Houston. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I have to give props to myself for my one baseball that uh, we, uh, I think it was the last time before the all-star break when we had uh, who's a Manoa at home against the, uh, against the scrubs from Kansas city or something. Yeah. And, and it was, I, we, I said it was like one and a half runs only like minus one to 50. And uh, I thought that they, I said, this feels like 10, nothing, but it wasn't 10, nothing. It was eight, one. I apologize, <laughs> but um, I think that uh, I think flexing is just kind of just not a play. I don't know. I, I, you know, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say that. Okay. I think that whenever you have Oda Rizzi at 7,600 going to be chalky and Manaya, whatever mid range chalky, I think that maybe flexing is in play. Yeah. He's yeah, a lot of those guys. Yeah. I'll, I'll consider him in play. And uh, I didn't quite get to any of the hitting, but why wouldn't I play Seattle? I don't know. Uh, I'm just not getting to them right now. Yeah, I'm open to Seattle. Um, I didn't. I didn't have them on my first run of the of guys who I really wanted to to play. But I, I think you know, Winker, uh, you know, Cal Raleigh. I like, although he's batting a little further, probably batting a little further down in the order than I would like. There's some there's some bats. I mean, then you've also got Santana at first, who's still really cheap. Um, I think, I think, I think that Seattle's certainly fine. Um, I have no problem attacking Otto and I am probably not going to play Flexen as a pivot. I'll, I'll use Brubaker and Ashby as my other main guys, just because I, I don't love the K rates in general with, uh, with Flexen. And he, he sort of, he always is solid enough and there's certain slates I would use him here, but when you have a bunch of pitchers in the same range, who I feel like I have more strikeout upside, I'm probably going to end up doing that. Even though I think he's likely going to have like one of those 12 fantasy, 12 to 14 fantasy point out, you know, and then if they win potentially gets up to 18, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind Seattle. I'm not getting to the, the hitting much in this game. I actually think you could make an argument for Texas at no ownership because as I, I don't want to stack them necessarily fully, like I said, we, we always say that, but usually it's because everybody's stacking against Flexen and he's been, he just, he's like always just effective enough, but to get a little three man stack might be an interesting way to go at just zero ownership. So I like the, like nobody's going to play Corey Seager at 5.6 on this kind of a slate. Uh, you've got, uh, yeah, yeah, Simeon's 5.1. It would be an expensive way to pay up in a not a not a great hitters park, but I, I think you know maybe if you want to play Calhoun and get like a little three man with those guys, or you play Jonah Heim as a part of a three man. I know they're traveling after scoring eleven runs yesterday, so it's not my favorite, but it, I just want to throw it out there. I wouldn't. I, I'm not opposed to it at first glance. All right, are we going to get into the to the mega chalk on the slate? Yep. So the Dodgers are rating to be the top play. Um, and you know, same same speech as always. You know, if you can want to play the Dodgers, I would not play them with, with with Odorizzi Manaya combinations. Um, uh, it's just going to be too chalky for in GPPs, um, unless you want to do stuff like you know, like play guys at the bottom of the order. And again, the good thing about Dodgers is that they don't release their lineup sometimes until a little later. They play later, yeah. Yeah. So right. Well, yeah. So. Um, you might be able to get some some lineups that, you know, people don't want to gamble on certain guys if they have to lock them in early, you know, whatever. So um, maybe you get, I don't know who it would be, but some kind of 
some guy that won't be that as low owned because he's at the bottom of the bottom of the order of the Dodger lineup. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they do rate to be the top play. Um, and you know, it's weird, you know, Tony Gonsolin, it's uh, being like a DFS guy and not as much of a sports guy anymore. I, I don't really know too much about who's good, a good pitcher. And though I see like Gonsolin being mentioned as one of the top pitchers in the national league, like yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree with it, but I, I just, I just don't see it because I don't ever play him in DFS because he's always like, you know what I mean? Like he's just not a DFS pitcher. You know, and it's, it's kind of funny. Um, uh, I, I presume that we, we still just, I presume a 10 is not a good price for him. Well, so yeah, he finally found a way to lose his first game of the season. He's 10 and 0. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> he's 10 and 0 with a 1.6 ERA. So oh my God. <laughs> pretty clearly the Cy Young winner right now, in my opinion, that this part of the season, but he finally got the loss of the all-star game as he gave up two home runs. He gave all the runs for the American league. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so he got his first loss, but it's not going to obviously count. Um, yeah, he's been, he's been terrific. Uh, and again, he has a little bit of an easier role than some other pitchers do where he's often pitching five or six innings, although it's been stretched out more and he's pitching well in, you know, he's pitching into the eighth and uh, two of his last three games. Um, I, I think that he's, you know, I think he's in play. Uh, I have, I have him, you know, you have the lowest run total on the slate against him. Uh, there, he doesn't, he's not like a, a crazy strikeout guy. So he maybe doesn't show up as much as some of the other guys do. And I think that's why for DFS, we don't use him. It's sort of a little bit of a max for a right-handed max freed in that sense, but he's been so effective and it's Washington. So I certainly have no problem taking some shots here with Gonsolin. Um, and I do love the Dodgers. I think if the way you do it, if, if you stack the Dodgers today is you want to play, you know, the bottom of the order uh, Bellinger and Lux alone will keep you different enough. If you go Bellinger, Lux and Muncie, you don't have to worry about it, anything because I don't think Bellinger is going to end up more than one or two percent owned, um, and I don't think Trace Thompson is going to be owned at all. So I think if you play those three guys, assuming that they're all in the lineup, of course, is we don't know what the lineup's going to come out yet. Austin Barnes might be in the lineup today. You never know um, if if they give Smith a day off or something on a Monday. But depending on how the lineup shakes out, I do think you can get different enough by playing the bottom of this lineup, and then you play those guys with Turner and and uh, Freeman or Turner and Betts or something like that. And I do think that will be low owned enough to where it still gives you a chance. So I have the Dodgers as the best stack on the slate. Everybody else probably does too, but I don't think there's any big difference. You know, you've got Muncie because he's batting fifth is going to be 20% owned and Bellinger is because he's batting eighth is going to be 2% owned. I think that's actually probably close to accurate. And it's something I just don't agree with. So I will, uh, I will, I will take the, uh, the lower owned guys who are at the bottom of the order. I have no problem doing that with the Dodgers. And I think you can get different enough with that and your complimentary stacks. So I will be high on the Dodgers, even though they're going to be popular. Yep. All right. Um, so just to reiterate for me, I have the Dodgers, Houston, Boston, and Cleveland as my favorite four stacks. Um, I'm going to mix in, you know, I'm, I'm still looking to look into a little bit deeper to San Diego, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, and Colorado as uh, the next guys. My main pitchers are going to be Manaya, Brubaker, Ashby, and, and Oda Rizzi. Uh, I will mix in some Syndergaard and Gonsolin, potentially Suarez as well. So that's where I'm at for this one. How about you? Anything you want to use to sum up? Yep. Um, for me, uh, it's uh, um, the Dodgers, the top stack, followed by, for me, it'd be San Francisco, Cleveland, and um, mm-hmm. uh, San Francisco and Cleveland. And then I'm, I am going to be giving out, uh, I am go- I'm going to be playing Oakland uh, as, as a leverage stack here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I completely biased they may be money before and i was just looking at the game logs for Rizzi, and you know what i got four four i got four negative numbers on his board you know what i mean hey <laughs> and that, that, one of those 30 percent 30 percent ownership plus that's good enough for me to to, to to take a shot against him so yeah uh, when i when, it, when a guy's done it four out of what 16 starts that you 25 percent of the time you would be you'd be on fire with that play you know what i mean and the um, DAs, all I need, listen, if I can get Ricky Henderson on and maybe get a couple of stolen bases, <laughs> I can get, we can get everything going. And then we got McGuire and Canseco all ready to go. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for business. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, good luck to everybody. We'll be live at 6 Eastern and uh, let's make some money. It's really good to be back. Good to see you, Sheets. And uh, good luck, everybody. So uh, I'm 